These are the secrets of the royal palaces. The most famous of all, Buckingham Palace. While the average British house has five rooms, the Queen's London home has an incredible 775, including 52 royal and guest bedrooms, 188 staff bedrooms, 92 offices, and 78 bathrooms. I mean, the whole place is an absolute warren of big and small rooms. Safe to say it takes a while to get to know how to get around. I mean, I, I, to this day, if you put me in there, I still wouldn't know how to get from A to B. Buckingham Palace is a royal HQ, the office. And it's in the 19 staterooms that the real business of monarchy happens, entertaining on a grand scale. I know that all my family join me in wishing you a very enjoyable evening. Thank you. The staterooms are the public face of Buckingham Palace. Incredibly gilded, um, famously lavish rooms, which are there to serve a public purpose. And the royals have a secret trick up their sleeve to make them appear extra grand. There's a lot of mirrors around, and I remember asking somebody, why so many mirrors? And it was to give the, the sense that it's even bigger you know, than what it already is. The ballroom is the largest room in the palace, with a ceiling the height of three double-decker buses. In the ballroom, is used uh, primarily for investitures, which happen about 25 times a year. There's a few people who are awarded honours. It's also where most state banquets are held. If you find laying the table a chore, spare a thought for the staff here. The average host would have six guests for dinner. Imagine preparing the room for a visiting head of state and 150 dignitaries. It takes an entire week. Another world famous part of the palace is the throne room. The throne room. It's the room where both Kate and William's wedding photographs were taken. But also, uh, William's grandmother, the Queen and Prince Philip, their wedding photos were taken in that room. I've seen the throne in the throne room. And I'm here to tell you, it's nothing to rave about. I know many people who have much grander armchairs. So if they want you to sit on it, they were being naughty, but I don't think the Queen's going to chop off their heads. <laughs> These are the secrets of the royal palaces. There are, of course, some delightfully funny stories about famous people behaving badly at Buckingham Palace. Most notably, of course, we have the Beatles who admitted to smoking cannabis in the loos at Buckingham Palace. And we know that Vivian Westwood went commando, or underwear free, uh, when she was herself in front of the Queen receiving an honor at Buckingham Palace. Margaret Taylor would never countenance such misbehavior. She's a Royal Palace's super fan. Welcome to Heritage House. Let me show you around my collection. Here we have Meghan and Harry. Margaret visits each of the main palaces several times a year. I think Buckingham Palace is the grandest one of all. There's something magical about it. The beautiful carpets, the beautiful pictures, um, paintings, uh, the gilt, the gold. I mean, you just know you're in a royal palace. This is Her Majesty's area here, plus up here, all my coronation mugs. I could fill the whole house with Her Majesty's stuff. It's brilliant. I think the real reason why the palaces play such a big part in our lives is because uh, history comes alive there. Margaret's just one of 50,000 people who visit Buckingham Palace every year. But with a working HQ of 800 staff, the real surprises lurk behind what the public see. Post office, there's a chapel, there is a doctor's surgery that's actually kitted out for genuine surgical procedures if there's an emergency. This is a swimming pool. Uh, 
When I was working there, I used it regularly, I used it every day, but then I gave up after a while because Princess Margaret used to use it. There's a Coots ATM in the basement, should the Queen ever decide she does need to carry cash. There used to be a staff bar. It was got rid of a few years ago because um, the staff were getting a little bit uh, worse for wear during the course of the day. I remember once watching the Queen walk in uh, towards what I thought was a mirror and a table and thinking, what's going to happen? You know, what's she going to do? And as she walked up to it, the, the, it opened and through she went. Behind the mirror, a genuine secret passageway leading to the Queen's private apartments. The Queen has to have a secret passage. She can't trail through miles and miles of corridors with people gawping at her. On that side table that's attached to the mirror, all the ornaments and so on are glued on, so nothing will fall off as the door is opened. Despite being such an established HQ, Buckingham Palace is a relatively new build. Architecturally, Buckingham Palace started off as a very beautiful house, arguably um, the most beautiful in England, and it gradually got worse. Built for the Duke of Buckingham at the end of the 17th century, it became a royal residence when George III bought it in 1761, transforming it into the palace that is still visible from the garden. This great spread has engulfed old Buckingham House. For his granddaughter, Queen Victoria, the existing palace wasn't enough, so she added a huge new wing in front of it. You end up with something which is a monster, frankly. The next to have a tinker was George V. He decided to fix the bodge job by adding a new facade of Portland stone, creating the palace we see today. Scaffolding came down summer 1913, blistering bright stone, new Baroque palace. The royals had the appearance, the semblance of a great European power, finally. It was Victoria who made the first public appearance on that famous balcony. A tradition that caught on. It, it is a focal point where people can gather and watch and wait for news. Greater and greater crowds surge around the palace railings as onto the balcony come the royal family, accompanied by our prime minister himself. VE Day, the ending of the war, Everything has always been focused on the balcony. I think my favourite has got to be at the wedding of Case and William, where William's three-year-old uh, goddaughter, Grace Van Cutsen, was seen to be holding her hands to her ears in horror and looking down at the, the huge crowds and the noise they were making. More recently, um, the Queen slightly um, admonished the Duke of Cambridge because uh, during the balcony appearance at Trooping the Colour, mm. he was bending down talking to George. Um, and we don't do that. We, we maintain not necessarily rigid attention, but upright so that um, the public can see you and um, no fiddling around. In some places, the outside is crumbling away. Bits of masonry falling off uh, the parapet of the, of the roof. I saw a piece narrowly miss the Princess Royal quite a number of years ago. It would be too embarrassing if a bit of masonry fell onto the head of a treasured head of state. And even more embarrassing if it fell onto the head of state who nobody liked. <laughs> it's true, what can you imagine? bit of masonry falling on poor Donald Trump's head. <laughs> Perhaps it's no surprise the Queen is rumoured not to be fond of her giant disintegrating home. It's a very institutional building. None of them likes it, including not the Queen. No, it's not true the Queen doesn't like Buckingham Palace. It's just that it is part of the job, goes with the territory, she is head of state, um, and she lives at Buckingham Palace when she's working in London. To escape the office, most weekends, the Queen goes to relax at her home near Slough, Windsor Castle. It might not be a palace by name, 
but it's bigger and grander than any other royal residence.